Right before we jump into this user's guide for the Nikon Z7, if you would like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and congratulations on picking up a Nikon Z7. And I'm going to help you learn what all of the buttons are on the outside of the camera, as well as show you how I would personally set up the menu system inside of the camera. You could basically look at this video as if it's your user's guide without actually reading the user's guide because, well, I use this thing in the real world, so I'm gonna help you set it up. Now, some of this stuff may seem basic to you, and you could jump around if you want because we have a table of contents down below. So now let's go around the outside of the camera and show you what each thing is. Starting with where the battery goes. Right down here on the bottom, you will find a door with Pac-Man on it. It's actually Pac-Man, really, it's true. Just go ahead and click there, the door opens, move this orange latch, and that's how your battery pops out. Now this battery right here is specific to this camera. Now it will work in the older Nikon cameras, but the difference between this one and the older batteries is that this one in this particular camera can be charged via the USB-C charging cable. So to put it in, you just move that little switch out of the way, pop it down until you hear click, close the door, click, and you're good to go. Now where does the memory card go? Right here on the side of the camera. Now this takes an XQD card. You pop open the door by putting your finger right here, pull it towards you, then let the spring go ahead and pop it out. So here is the card right here. It will take an XQD card. There's only a couple of companies making these currently. You can then put it right in one way. There's also a little picture down here at the bottom. Go ahead, press it in. It's spring loaded, you hear a click, it goes down, shut the door, press it back the other way, you hear the click, and it's ready to go. Now the other thing you need to know is how do we turn on this camera? You have the on-off switch right here. Currently it's off, all you need to do to make it go on, just flick this switch this way. Never force the camera to do anything it doesn't want to do. Always ask for consent before you do it. The last thing you wanna do is break the camera by forcing a button. It just goes off by flicking it the other way. Now, if you bought the kit, it would have come with a 24 to 70 f4s. Now, how do you put this lens on and take it off? So right now, it's currently on. You see this black button right here on the left side of the camera? If you press that in, and then you rotate away from you, you can then take the lens off. Now you see this image sensor in here? There is nothing protecting that. So do not touch that with anything. Don't get dirt on it, don't get dust on it. Be very careful that you turn off the camera before you switch lenses. Now to put the lens back on, there's a white dot right there. There's a white dot on the camera. You line those two up, you turn it back towards you, you hear that click, and now the lens is on there. One thing you need to know about this lens is that before you can start shooting, you have to unlock it. So turn it to the right, and that's when it goes to 24 to 70. That's how you zoom it. This is your focus ring for the lens. When you're done shooting and you're gonna put this in the bag, go ahead and lock it again. You just twist it like this, and it goes ahead and locks the lens away. So the question is, how do you put on your older Nikon lenses that aren't Z lenses? Well, you need an adapter. And I so happen to have one right over here. So let me take this lens off, try not to spit in the camera, pick up the adapter, and this is your FTZ adapter. As you can see, you can see right through it. There's no mechanical things in this at all. I can put my finger right through the center of it. The way that this goes on the camera is the same way that you took your lens off. You line up the white dots, just like this. You hear the click. You can now see that your adapter is on there. You take your F mount lens, you take the white dot, line it up with this white dot, just like this go in like that, you'll hear the click, and now you're ready to shoot with your adapted lens. You just wanna be careful that when you take the adapter off, that you don't try to put a F-mount lens directly into this camera because you may end up damaging the image sensor. 
So now that you know how to use the Z-mount lenses directly onto this camera, and also how to use the F to Z adapter, let me talk about the other buttons. Right here where the on and off switch is, this is your shutter button. This is what you press halfway down to get your autofocus, and when you press it all the way down, that's when you get your photos when you take them. This plus minus right here is your exposure compensation. I personally don't use exposure compensation at all when I'm shooting. The ISO button is right here. In order to change the ISO from this area, you would press down on ISO and turn this back dial. Speaking of the back dial, this will control your shutter speed when you're in manual. And to change your aperture, you turn this dial with your front finger right here. Now you can reverse that if you would like, but I like to have my shutter speed on the back and my aperture right here on the front. Now this red button right here with the red dot in it, that is how you record video. When you're in video mode, you go ahead and you press that, that starts the recording. To stop it, you go ahead and press it again, and then your camera stops recording video. So right next to this command dial, there is a screen. Now this is an OLED screen that when you turn on the camera, you can go ahead and see the information right here. It's nice to have the information there, but all the information that is here is also on the back of the camera as well as in your viewfinder. So speaking of viewfinder, this is an electronic viewfinder, also known as an EVF, electronic viewfinder. This is what you're going to look through when you're going to take your pictures and you're gonna see exactly what your camera sees. On the side of the EVF, you have a diopter. So if you have bad eyes or you wear glasses, you can go ahead and pop this out and then twist the dial, which is gonna go ahead and change the diopter to be perfect for your eyesight. Go ahead and press that back in when you're done. On top of the camera, this is your hot shoe. You would pop out this piece of plastic and then throw that on the table because you'll probably never use it again. And then right here is where you put a flash or you could also put a microphone if you're going to be shooting video. On the side here, you have another button. This will let you either just use the electronic viewfinder and not have the back screen go on, or have the back screen go on and not use the electronic viewfinder. Just go ahead and play with this till you determine which one works best for you. I personally leave it default to where it was when I got the camera. I'm gonna turn off the camera to save some battery life, by the way, because when you're not using it, you kinda wanna turn off the camera so it doesn't waste extra battery life. Around the top dial, you've got your manual, which is M, A is aperture priority, S is shutter priority, P is professional mode, actually it's program. It's basically full auto, but the camera is still doing all of the different changes for you, but you still have access to other menu settings. Green mode is full auto. Most likely if you purchase this camera, you probably shouldn't be in green mode ever. You've got U1, U2, and U3. When you switch over to U2, it starts playing music by Bono, and you may wanna stay off of that if you don't like Joshua Tree, but that's really not what it is. These are custom user settings. You can put different settings that you can quickly get to. Say you have settings for super bright times, then you would be in that. And then you have indoor settings. You can switch to that if that's under U2. That is a great feature that they have right there. Moving now to the back of the camera, let's start with the biggest thing there, and that is your LCD screen. This is a touch panel display, so you could go ahead and touch every function, which I'll show you later on in this video, but it comes out, flips like this. You can go like this, flip it down, and then pull it out just like that. Just be careful that you don't force this in any direction that it doesn't want to go because you don't wanna break this. You'll have to send it back to go ahead and get fixed. So I leave it back there just like that. This is the playback button. You go ahead and press that to play back the images on the back of the screen. Then you've got your trash can. You press that, Oscar the Grouch comes out. He doesn't really come out. You press that and that's how you delete your photos. Generally, you have to press it twice. It says, would you like to delete? And then it probably says, are you sure you want to delete? Because you, you know, I personally don't delete any pictures on the camera. I save that for after the fact if I wanna go ahead and do that. Moving around to this part of the camera, you've got a switch that goes from photo mode to video mode. So if you set your settings for video mode and then you go ahead and you switch, you can then set your settings 
for photo mode. You have a display button right here so that every time you press that display button and the camera is on, it's gonna change the different functions on the back of the screen. You have your AF on button, which is a button that you can set for back button focus. I personally don't use back button focus myself, but it's nice to have that option there. It does come in handy from time to time. You have a joystick right here. This is for moving your focusing points. Uh, it just put your finger there, press it in. It's got some nice nibs on there, nubs, nibs, whichever way you want to call them. It's got some nice nubbins and you can go ahead and move your focusing points there. The I button is your info button. This comes in handy when you want to quickly change your settings, especially if your eye is up against the EVF. You can hit this button and then a bunch of information comes up and you can quickly change those settings. I'll show you more on that later. You've got a D-pad right here. It goes up, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, select and start. You also have an OK button to hit OK when it wants you to hit OK. You've got a magnifying glass with a plus button. That's to zoom in. If you go the other way with the minus magnifying glass, of course, it zooms out. This right here is a how many frames a second you're gonna be able to shoot. You're gonna hold this in and you're gonna turn one of these top dials. I'm not sure which one it is right now while the camera is off, but you're gonna go ahead and do that to change. If you wanna shoot single frame, do you wanna shoot five frames a second? Do you wanna shoot more frames a second? You can go ahead and press that button. And then you've got the menu button, which activates your menu, which is where you set up all of your settings. Turning the camera over to the bottom, you have where you would mount your tripod plate for when you have a tripod. Now this is interesting because I have on the F to Z adapter. In order to put the tripod plate on in this case, you're gonna go ahead and put it onto the adapter, not the body. If you had just on a regular Z mount lens, you would then put the plate on the body right here. We already talked about the battery door, but over here on the side of the camera, you have a piece of rubber that moves out of the way that allows you to plug in your microphone and your headphones just right there. Then down here is where you can put a wired remote. Then you have an HDMI out as well as your USB port, which is a USB-C, which you can use to charge or also transfer files to the computer. Now moving around to the front, after I press these rubber nubbins back, you've got your release for taking off your lenses, which I showed you earlier. You have a little LED light right here, which can help you focus. Now I personally turn that off because I don't wanna distract anybody. And then hiding right in here, which may be a little hard to see, is a function one and a function two button that you can program for certain settings so that you can quickly get to those functions when you're shooting pictures. So basically that's the outside of the camera. That's how you put the lens on it and that's what all those buttons mean. I know it sounds basic, but again, you do this once, you learn what everything is, and then you can move on from there. So now, let's get to setting up the menu system. So I hope you're enjoying this video and finding it informative. Now, are you subscribed to my YouTube channel? Well, if not, could you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell right next to it so that you can be notified when my videos go live. Be sure to check out the archive of all my past videos because I have a ton of free content there to help you become a better photographer or video shooter. Before I jump into setting up this camera, I wanna let you know that this camera does have the ability to load settings. So if you have your friend's camera that they set up and you want to copy their settings, you can pop your card in there, save the settings to the card, and then load them back in your camera. So I'm going to supply my settings as a file that you can download. Just look for the link down below in the description. Go ahead and click that link, download that file, put it onto your memory card. We'll have instructions down below, and then you can have my settings loaded onto your camera. But let's start going through the menu system. So the first thing that you're going to see is the playback menu. We're going to come back to that in the future because I want to get to setting up the camera first. Here is your photo shooting menu. You've got reset photo shooting menu. We're not going to reset it right now because there's nothing to reset. Your camera is blank. We've got storage folder. I don't ever change the name of the storage folder so it defaults to ncz underscore seven. File naming, DSC. You can actually go in here and change the file naming. I like to change and add my own information so I type in like F R O oh geez, that's P. Well, we'll go with FRP for now, and I go ahead and hit OK. Part of the problem with this camera is that when you're trying to type things in, it's not a QWERTY keyboard. It's A, B, C, D all the way across instead of QWERTY, which would be better. I also want to point something else out to you on this camera. 
But down here on the bottom left, there's this question mark. If you hit that question mark, you go ahead and do that, it will then bring up that information on exactly whatever is highlighted. So in this case, I have file naming highlighted. It says choose the first three letters of the names assigned by the camera. Now, that is good in case you don't know something that you're highlighting. It's basically a built-in user's guide. So that's how I do the file naming. Uh, choose image area. FX is full frame. You have a couple of options in there. FX, DX, 5x4, 1 to 1, which is square, or 1 by 1, which is square, and 16 by 9. For me, shooting photos, it's always going to be in FX, full frame. I want all of that quality. Image quality is important. It defaults to normal JPEG. I personally go ahead and set it to raw by itself. You can do RAW plus JPEG if you want to take both. I personally just shoot RAW, so I leave it set in RAW at all times. I can hit it and it saves it. Image size, this is what you would set for JPEG. I go ahead and leave it on large. And with NEF RAW, I also leave this on RAW large. You have the option of doing RAW medium as well as RAW small. Just remember that if you go small, you can never go big again. But if you go big, you can always go home. It's go big, go home. But anyway, if you go large, you can always downsize, but you can't go back up to supersize it, even if you have a quarter. I go ahead and hit this arrow to go back. It's a touch screen, hit it again. We're back into the menu system. Nef Raw recording. I go ahead and have Nef Raw on, let's see. It's on lossless compressed right now. There's compressed and then there's uncompressed. Let's read what the camera tells us about these. We've got this and it goes, lossless compressed NEF RAW images are compressed using a reversible algorithm that reduces file size by about 20 to 40%. I still don't do that personally. I go to uncompressed. Uh, the reason I do that is I just want all the data. Even though I know you're not losing anything, I want it to be uncompressed. So I save it to uncompressed. ISO sensitivity settings, you're gonna go ahead and change this to whatever you want it to be. Um, auto ISO sensitivity control, I personally turn that off. I wanna be in full control of my camera. But if you wanna go ahead and do that in, in auto ISO, you can set maximum sensitivity, maximum sensitivity with flash, and then minimum shutter speed. And the cameras do a pretty good job there. I just like making the choice of ISO myself. Now moving on to the next thing, I just realized that, well, this is a touch screen. I could kind of just hold in and drag and it's gonna go ahead and move through the menu system. I kind of like using the up, up arrow and the down, down arrow. That way it's actually pretty easy to move. We just did ISO sensitivity, white balance I leave on auto, set picture control, I leave that on auto for the most part. Now if you're shooting JPEGs, you wanna be careful that when you set your picture control that you know that those settings will be baked into the JPEG files. Actually, now with the raw files, those settings are baked in but can be reset. They can't be reset later in the computer if you shoot JPEG. So for example, if you go into something like monochrome and take pictures in JPEG, your images are only gonna be black and white. If you're in monochrome when you shoot raw, the previews on the back of the camera will show up as black and white, but when you bring it into the computer, you still have the raw data, which means you can pull the color files back out. Moving down the list, you've got manage picture control. You can go ahead and save or load custom settings right there. Color space I leave on sRGB. Active delighting is another thing that I personally leave off. It's only affecting the JPEGs. We've got long exposure noise reduction. I personally turn that off because what noise reduction is doing in the camera is really smoothing out the grain and it kind of takes away sharpness from your images. That's why I go ahead and turn that off. We've got high ISO noise reduction. I actually turn that off as well. I don't want that on, so I go ahead and tap it. I go ahead and tap it in to take it off. Vignette control, right now it's on normal. This is another thing that I personally turn off because I don't want the camera making co corrections for me. I can do that all in the raw file later. Moving on, we've got diffraction compensation, which is on. I honestly don't know what the heck that is, but if I had to guess, well, there's actually no question mark there, so it won't tell me. It's probably something to do with lens correction. I'm turning that off. 
I, I don't want it to make decisions for me. All right, we've got flicker reduction for shooting. That's if you're in a place that has a lot of flickering lights, the camera, when this is on, will try to shoot between the flickers, which is actually pretty good when you're shooting in gymnasiums. Metering, there's different metering modes. You've got matrix metering, center weighted, spot metering, highlight weighted metering. I tend to leave it on matrix metering. And the good thing about these cameras today is that you have an electronic viewfinder and when you have on your controls that when you change your settings, it's reflective of what your exposure looks like. If it looks good in the EVF, it's probably gonna look good in the photo as long as you have that set properly. Flash mode, flash compensation, I leave those the way that they're set. Focus modes, you've got AFS, means single focus, that when you press down the shutter button halfway, it's going to lock the focus in, and as long as your fingers press halfway down and you move, focus stays locked in. But if the subject moves, you're gonna have to refocus. It's not good for tracking. It's really good for inanimate objects. Now moving down, you've got AFC, which is continuous AF. As long as your fingers press halfway down on the shutter button, it's gonna continuously focus on whatever is going through your frame. That's great for shooting sports, shooting action, where anything is moving and you wanna go ahead and track them. And then you also have manual focus if you wanna go ahead and focus your lenses manually. Moving on, we've got AF area mode. There's a ton of different modes now. You can access all of these from the back of the camera too while you're shooting, but you've got Pinpoint AF, which is a new feature that they have on this Z7. It gives you a super small, fine pinpoint uh, autofocusing point. It's not the best. It's not really, actually, there's a question mark. Let me read this to you. It says pinpoint AF, camera focuses within a small area. Well, I knew that, I already said that. I thought it would go into more detail. It doesn't. Pinpoint AF is something that you wanna use if you wanna get that point perfectly on something, but just know that it's much slower to do the autofocus when you're using pinpoint AF. Single point AF is something that you use when you just want a single point, and then you put your focus point where you want it, and that's where you're gonna have your focus. Moving on, dynamic area AF isn't highlighted right now because it's not available in the current mode that I'm in, but I use dynamic area AF all the time. It's great for tracking subjects because what happens is you put your box where you want it and it's got a couple of boxes around it and it takes all of the autofocus information from the surrounding autofocusing points and helps keep the subject as they move through the frame in focus. So dynamic area AF is a great focus mode. You've got wide area AF, you've got wide area AF large, so you've got small, you've got large, it means exactly what it means, and then you've got auto area AF. That means the camera is going to select the best focusing point it thinks that you should be using. I personally don't let the camera do any of the auto auto things. It may come in handy if you want to track a specific subject, but tracking isn't the best in this type of camera. I like to go ahead and leave it in either single point or dynamic area AF. Okay, I need to switch legs. Hold on. My one leg was falling asleep. We don't want that to happen. Go ahead and hit the back button here. We just did uh, AF area mode. We've got vibration reduction. You go ahead in here, you have VR, which is on normal. You could put it on sport, or you could go ahead and turn it off. What you need to know is that this camera has built-in image stabilization on the sensor. So if you have a lens that has VR on it, one of the older lenses, you can turn that off and on either on the side of the lens and that's gonna control it in the camera and turn it off, or if it doesn't offer it there, you can turn it on or off from this menu setting. Then you have auto bracketing for flash, I leave that where it is. Multiple exposures, I leave that off. HDR dynamic range, that's off as well. Interval timer shooting is if you're going to go, oh, this is a really cool mode, by the way. You can see all these different options that you have. You can choose a start time and date, and then the camera will start shooting. You could say how many pictures it will take. Will it be every second? So you could be like, I want you to take X amount of pictures every second or after each second, take a certain burst. Then moving on, you have how many shots it will take every time it takes a picture. Right now it's set to one shot every time it goes ahead and takes it. It looks like you can do 9,999 shots 
every time. So this is the interval timer shooting. It's a really cool mode if you're gonna do some time lapses after the fact. This mode is super cool and not every camera has it built in. So congratulations to you for having that built in. Uh, exposure smoothing is something that you would wanna put on if you are doing some of those interval shootings and the weather is changing because it will gently and smoothly transition your exposure so that you're, you don't get herky-jerkiness in your time lapse. Next up, we have silent photography. This is where you turn on the ability to shoot fully silent. You go into this mode, you put it on or off, and obviously you either shoot with the shutter coming down or silent, which is completely silent, which is awesome. Next, you've got end daytime. Oh, we're still in this. I didn't realize we're still in interval timer shooting. There is a lot of stuff in the interval timer shooting menu. So that actually reminds me that when you are doing interval timer shooting, this silent photography part is gonna save you some battery life because the shutter doesn't have to come down each time you turn that on. So you wanna go ahead and have silent shooting on. It will just take the pictures and not have to move the shutter, which will save you some extra battery while you're shooting. So there's your uh, interval priority, as well as the folder that you're gonna shoot in, and then we'll just go back out. That is an intense menu system right there. Focus shift shooting, let me show you what that says. The camera automatically takes photos at a set interval while moving focus from the start position toward infinity. Shooting ends when the selected number of shots have been taken or focus reaches infinity. This is actually a fantastic mode for macro photographers, somebody who's gonna photograph bugs and you wanna get a lot of it in focus and not just one thing. It will take a ton of pictures and then you need to go ahead and stack it later on and then Finally, this is where silent photography is outside of the interval velometer setting. This is where you go in, you shoot silent, there it is, silent on or silent off. Moving out of silent shooting, we can now go down to movie shooting menu. So with the movie shooting menu, by the way, I know this is a, this is a lot of information, but that's why I'm including the file that already has it set up. But it is important that you know what each one of these settings do so that you can go back later on and tweak the settings that work best for you. Reset movie shooting menu, we have nothing to reset. File naming, I leave that where it is. Choosing image area, right now it's in FX, which is gonna take a full frame reading of your video but it is recommended that with this camera you shoot in DX for better quality video because this has a super high resolution, uh, lots of megapixels, that it's gonna be better to shoot with DX mode. But keep in mind with DX mode, you're now adding a 1.5X crop factor on every lens that you put onto this camera. Moving on, we've got frame size and frame rate. This is an intense menu. You've got, this is where you pick between your 4K, your slow-mo, your 24 frames a second. Let's just go through here and I wanna show you something. 1920 by 1080 with the 30P with the 4X slow-mo. Now when you see these three right here, that's going to bake in the slow motion without audio. So when you shoot it, it's gonna then save it to a file format that already has the 120 frames per second slowed down. But if you go up here and you go to 120, this is going to give you the non-baked in file. So you will get audio in this mode. You'll just have to slow it down yourself in post-production. Now what I do recommend is that you shoot in the 4K at 24P. That's gonna be one of the best modes that you can shoot in. Moving on, we've got movie quality. Well high or normal. Uh, generally speaking, I wanna be high. I want to have the best quality as possible. Movie file type, I just leave this on MOV. ISO sensitivity settings, this is where you can set it yourself or auto ISO for video really isn't a bad option, especially when it smooths everything out for you. Nikon does a great job with that option as well. White balance is currently set to auto, but if you know your white balance, the, the Kelvin degrees uh, temperature of the situation that you're in, you would wanna go ahead and lock that in because it's much harder to change the white balance after the fact. 
Moving down the menu, we've got set picture control. Remember, set your picture control for your video because however you set it is what your video is gonna end up looking like. If you want it to be vivid, you could go in there and select vivid. If you want it to be monochrome, well, just remember, you're gonna lose all that color information for your video as it's baked in. Same thing as before with manage picture control. We've got active D lighting is currently off. High ISO noise reduction is on normal. I'm still gonna turn that off even for video. Vignette control, I'm turning that off. If you want more vignette, you can have it. If you want less, you can go ahead and have that as well. Diffraction is currently on. Same as before, you can either leave this on or turn it off. I'm not sure you're gonna see much of a difference. And flicker reduction is currently set to auto, so I would leave it in auto if that's what the camera is recommending you do. You've got metering mode, you've got your focusing modes. This is where you can go in and have it do full-time autofocus. It's the first time that the Nikon has basically gotten it more right than wrong. They have some pretty good autofocus for tracking when it comes to video. You can check out uh, some of our other videos that showcase how well that does work. You've got your AF area mode. You can go in there and make some changes if you would like, same as when you're shooting stills. And as we move down, vibration reduction, you generally wanna have this on when you're shooting video handheld. If you're on a tripod, you can go ahead and turn this function off. Electronic VR is digital VR, digital image stabilization kind of really don't need that, so go ahead and leave that off. You've got your microphone sensitivity, you can leave it on auto, or if you're gonna set your own settings, you can go ahead and change that manually or turn your microphone off. Just go ahead and if you don't know what you're doing, auto is probably gonna work, and if you do know what you're doing, you're definitely happy that you have manual controls. Moving down, the attenuator, if you have a low quality microphone, you may wanna turn this function on. If not, go ahead and leave it off. Frequency response, we've got it on wide currently. Wind noise reduction, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in a really super windy place, you could turn that on, but generally speaking, we leave that off. Just use one of the, the, the dead cats, which is the thing that is over your microphone, which is gonna cut down on the wind by itself. Headphone volume, of course, it's gonna change the volume of your headphones, and then you even have a time code option. Let me cut in here real quick and ask you how do you input, organize, and protect all of your camera gear? Because if you're watching this, you probably own a Nikon Z7 and a whole bunch of gear. Well, I created a free app called My Gear Vault, which is gonna do exactly that. So go ahead and download it for free for iOS and Android at mygearvault.com. Now let's get back to the video. Moving to the next menu, we've got the custom setting menu. This is another intense menu. There's a lot of information in here, but really once you learn what's in here, it's pretty easy to get through. So we've got autofocus. We've got autofocus priority selection. I leave this on what's it currently on, release. So release is where I have it. Let me just read this to you real fast. Choose the operation performance when the shutter release button is pressed. Release, the shutter can be released even when the camera is not in focus. The shutter can only be released when the camera is in focus if you have it set to the focus part. Now this is for AFC for continuous. I sometimes have found in the past that even though it looks to be in focus and even in the end it is in focus, sometimes the camera, if you have it set to focus, doesn't actually shoot and you miss the shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on release. Uh, moving on, AFS priority mode, same thing, focus or release. You need to choose which one works best for you. I generally put this one onto focus because if it's not in focus, it's not gonna shoot. But if you find that it's kind of locking up and you're like, it's in focus, it's in focus, you want it to shoot, then you would just go ahead and switch that to release. Focus tracking with lock on. I just leave this default to where it is, but you can see what you can do. You can speed it up, you can slow it down. It's uh, up to you to decide which one works best. Moving on, we have auto area AF face detection. Now, if you have the auto area AF selected and you've got face detection on, it's gonna prioritize faces over other parts of the scene. Focus points used, I like to leave all of them on. You can put every other, but I like to have the choice of all instead of half. Store points by orientation. So I kind of put this as yes. Choose separate focus points for vertical and horizontal operations. Actually you're better off leaving that on no, so that when you flip the camera, the focus point stays in the same spot as you just had it. AF activation is currently on. Let me read that. 
Choose which, co uh, which controls can be used to focus the camera. Ah, right, that's the back of the camera. Do you see how I use the question mark to help me out when I'm not sure of something? There's just so much information to know that when you have the question mark, it really does help you. So I leave that on because every once in a while, I'll go ahead and use it. Limit area AF mode selection. Wow, look at all of these. You can turn off some of them that if you don't want pinpoint to show up in the menu system as an option, you can turn that off from here. So, I mean, that's up to you. I just leave them all on for the most part so I can go ahead and choose them. Next up, focus point wrap. I put this on. This means that when my focusing points go all the way to the right and I keep pressing and they can't go right any further, they'll end up going to the left. They'll come from the left side of the frame. I go ahead and put that on wrap so that it wraps around and changes. Focus point options, let's go in here. We've got manual focus on, dynamic area AF, or AF assist is on, focus point options, yeah. So I go ahead and leave that on. Moving back, low light AF is off, weirdly, that's an interesting setting. Make focus easier to achieve even in low light locations. Only enable when focus mode is set to single AF, can't be used for movie shooting, uh, achieving focus may take longer. Yeah, screw you. I don't want it to take longer. I leave it off. Built-in AF assist illuminator. That's where that orange light comes on. I turn that off because the last thing you want to be doing is taking discrete photos of something or somebody and then they see this light going on and they're like, you, you over there with the weird hair, why are you taking photos of me? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. Anyway, moving on, EV steps for exposure. Control one third is perfectly fine. Next up, we've got easy exposure compensation. I leave this off. I don't want that on at all. You can go ahead and read up on that, but I'm just gonna tell you that I leave that off. Center weighted area, you can change this from 12. Actually, it used to be, you could used to, you used to be able to do eight. So I guess on the mirrorless, they only let you do the center weight of 12. Fine tune optimal exposure. It's another thing I don't even touch. Exposure compensation icon is not displayed when exposure is altered from the, you know what, get out of here. I don't even want you on my screen. Next up, shutter release button, AEL, it's off. I personally leave it off. You've got your self timer, which is a great mode to use if you wanna set this up on a tripod. You can go in here and set up a bunch of different settings between 10 seconds, two seconds, five seconds. I actually love this option where it's number of shots. You can go ahead and set this to nine shots. Every time you tell it to shoot, it's gonna take the first picture and then take eight more if you have it set to nine. And you can also have it delay a second in between or a half a second. That's pretty cool if you need to get a bunch of different photos. Power off delay. Um, we have this currently set to 10 minutes on everything so that it doesn't reset my recording. Yeah, uh, you can go ahead and change that to power off after say a minute or turn off image review after a minute. That's just so you save some power. Next up, we've got CL mode, shooting mode, uh, three frames a second. So that's the in CL, which is the low mode of shooting. You can have it do one frame a second, two frame a second, all the way up to five frames. I generally leave it where it is at default on three. Uh, you've got maximum continuous release, 200. Sync release options, I leave that where it is. Exposure delay mode, this is off, I leave this off. Electronic front curtain shutter, I leave this off as well. Like I said, if you wanna read up on some of this stuff, go ahead and hit that question mark in there. Limit select selectable image area. Um, yeah, that's the same thing as before where you could take away certain options that you don't wanna ever use. You could take those away, say you didn't wanna go into one-to-one -one or a square photo. You won't ever go into that if you turn that off. File number sequence is important. I leave this on so that every time you take a picture, it keeps adding. So if you took 10 photos, it's gonna, the next photo is gonna be 11. Whereas when you take the card out of the camera and put another card in, it would start back at zero. I don't want it to be back at zero. Apply settings to live view is a very important mode, especially if you shoot with flash. So what this mode does is it applies setting to live view. When it's on, if you're changing your exposure and you're looking through the viewfinder, you're gonna see an exact exact representation of your exposure. So if it's over or underexposed, well, it's gonna show you that. But if you go ahead and turn this off, it's just gonna be a bright viewfinder and it's not gonna be a perfect representation or as perfect as possible that this camera can 
can give you of what your exposure is going to be. So if you're in the studio shooting with a flash or shooting with strobes, you go ahead and you turn that off so that you, because you're not gonna get a perfect representation of your exposure when you're shooting flash. Moving on, we've got framing grid display is off. If you need help with your framing, you can turn that on. We've got peaking highlights. That's pretty cool. If you wanna get help with your manual focus, you can put on peaking highlights. View all in continuous mode, I have that on. Flash sync, flash shutter speed, exposure comp, this stuff I leave exactly where it's set because it, it when you're shooting flash, those settings are pretty good right off the bat. Customize the I button menu, which is where I put a ton of stuff. You can go ahead and change it. Say you don't want release mode right here, you can hit OK and then select from all of these different options. I know how I like to have it set for me and I'll leave it that way when, I, when you download the file to go ahead and see how I set that if you wanna install that onto your camera. Now moving down, we've got custom controls assignments. You can go in here and this is where you will customize the controls of the camera. Everything is self-explanatory when you go into this area. If you wanna change that yellow button, which is on the, it's not actually yellow, but it's highlighted. So on the front of the camera, you could change that. Right now it's set to white balance. And I'll just show you what you could change that to. Same as before, you just go here and you could select it. Oh, I want it to be multiple exposures. You could go ahead and change it to that. Um, you get in there, there's lots of different options that you could use, so go ahead and change it. OK button, it starts off shooting mode is on reset. So what that means is when you hit the OK button while you're looking through the viewfinder, it will put your focusing points back in the middle, especially if you can't find them but you should be able to find them because they light up red. Playback mode is already set to the magnifying glass. So when I'm in playback, let me go ahead and do that, and I hit OK, it zooms in on the image. You can see how far it jumps in. That is great for checking your focus. Switching legs again here because my leg just fell asleep. It's like a stranger is sitting on this chair. You've got shutter speed uh, and aperture lock. Again, I leave this on the defaults. Customize command dials. This is where you can reverse the command dials. I leave it defaulted to where it is. Release button to use uh, dial off, same thing. Reverse indicators, nope, not doing that. Customize I button for movies. So before it was customized I button for photos. Now you can customize it for movies, which is another cool option. So you can, when you switch this switch right here, it will go in and give you that custom menu. Custom control assignment for video. You can change all of those settings. OK button, same thing, it does reset. AF speed, you could speed it up, slow it down for video. AF tracking sensitivity, currently it's on four. You could change that as well. Highlight display, so right here we've got display pattern on or off. So this is where you would turn on your zebra lines. And also you can see this is where you change the threshold as well. And that takes us through the entire custom settings menu. I know that's intense, so go in there change things if you want to change them, just read the, man the manual that's built into the camera if you have any questions. But yes, we got through that mode. Next, we move down to the wrench, which is the setup menu. It has format card. This is where you would format the card when you're ready to do so. Formatting will delete everything on the card, so make sure before you do that that you don't need anything that is on that memory card. Never do you want to reformat the card if you haven't backed up or downloaded your photos yet to the computer. Save user settings. This is where you can set your U1, U2, and U3 settings, like I mentioned before. You've got reset user settings. Obviously, that's where you reset it. Language, you can change the different languages, whether you wanted this to be in English or Canadian, which is also English, by the way. It doesn't, it just adds A after everything if you're Canadian. So it's like language A. I wish they had the Canada mode in here, but they actually don't. And I wish it played their national anthem every time I turned it off or on. That would be an awesome mode. Uh, time zone and date. This is where you set the time. This is where you can put daylight savings time on. This is really self-explanatory. Moving back out, monitor brightness. We currently have the monitor brightness here set to negative two so that Steven can record my monitor and it's gonna look good. You can actually change the monitor brightness of the EVF. That's something you have to do while looking through the EVF. Uh, monitor color balance, I leave that defaulted to where it was. Viewfinder brightness, I do not leave on auto. I turn this off and I put this on to manual and I leave it on, see, setting viewfinder brightness. Check the brightness in the viewfinder. This is where you put your eye up to it. I can do that, correct? Without ruining it? Okay, I put my eye up to it and then I just leave it set to zero. 
The reason I do that is because I want to make sure that I'm not throwing off my exposure by either having it too bright or too dark. So that's why I personally leave that set to zero myself. Viewfinder color balance, same thing. I leave that default. Next up, we have control panel brightness. That's up at the top. You can set it between, it looks like up to four. Uh, oh, actually it goes to seven. Wow, it goes from one to seven. Or you could leave it on auto. I, I don't really use that, so I leave it on auto anyway. Uh, information display, this is interesting. You could have it dark or you could have it light to dark. Doesn't really matter. Find which one works best for you. I usually leave it where it is. AF fine tune, this is where you would go to fine tune your lenses. No non-CPU lens data. This is if you're connecting lenses that are older, you can save their settings in here. That's something if you have old manual lenses, you would wanna set up right there. Clean image sensor, which I'm not gonna do right now while we're recording, but that's where you would go to clean the sensor. The camera's gonna do the cleaning for you. It's not gonna get rid of bad stuff or extra things sticking to it. It does an okay job. Just remember, do not ever touch the sensor that is exposed in, when you take the lens off. Image dust off, I don't use that either. Image comment, I definitely do use. I type in Jared Poland Frono's photo. For copyright information, same thing, Jared Poland Frono's photo. Sometimes I put an email in there. I just like that it stores my information and my metadata right inside the file. So if anybody gets this file, they can see that my information is there. Beeps on or off. I like to have my beeps on and I can change the volume. You can hear that. Now, of course, if you're shooting a wedding or if you're shooting silent, you probably don't wanna have that on. You can change the pitch from high to low. I actually like having that on when I shoot concerts because I can kind of hear the high pitch even though I have my earplugs in, uh, but that's just something that I like to do. Touch controls are on so that you could touch the back of the screen. HDMI, location data, leave these where they are. Uh, assign remote, that's if you had a remote selected. Airplane mode is off because you have Wi-Fi and NFC, I believe. Uh, so for this, I currently leave that off because I'm not transmitting any data from the camera. Connect to smart devices off. Obviously, you know what that means. You connect to a smart device when it's on. Connect to PC. You have your wireless transmitter if you connect that to it. Uh, conformity marketing marking. This is funny. This is, that's it. That's, that's that for the FCC, I believe. Uh, battery information, this is where you can go to see how much charge is left, how many shots you've taken, and also the life expectancy of the battery. When it gets further to the end, which I've honestly never had a battery get that far, uh, then it's time to replace it. Slot empty release lock is on. So I put this on to lock. I don't wanna take a picture if I do not have film, quote unquote, in the camera. So I put that on lock unless you're doing a demo and you want it to shoot pictures, then you could turn that off. Uh, save load settings. This is where you go to load the settings that you can download from me down below. You would load them right here. And then you can also save your settings. I would say email them to yourself so you have them in your email so that if anything ever changes or you get two of the same cameras, you can load the same settings into both of them. It really makes things nice and fast. Reset all menu settings. I don't wanna do that because we just spent all this time setting them up. And then firmware version, if there's firmware updates, you'd go here to go ahead and set up more firmware. Moving down the line here, we've got the retouch menu, which is I'm not doing any retouching in the camera, so I don't go here. Um, so honestly, I don't go here, I'm gonna skip right past it. But my menu is super important because you can add things here like uh, format, you can put silent mode in here, but to be honest with you, now that I have this I button on the back of the camera, I put all the things that used to go into my menu into the I menu button because it's much quicker and easier to get there. Now, now we can go back to the top where the playback menu is. So playback folder, I have it set to all. That's default, I leave it there. Playback display options, this is important. Do you wanna see focus points? You would hit over. You wanna see additional information, your exposure, your highlights, RGB shooting data, overview, and, and none, which would be just the image on the screen, you wanna make sure you hit okay here. Now let me show you what that does. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit up. 
You see how this is blank, there's nothing on it. As I hit up, it shows me different shooting data. So it gives me all the different information. You can turn this off if you want, but I like having certain things on. One of the things I don't really need is the, the, the color histogram, but it's also nice to have the regular histogram right there as well. So that's that menu setting. Now I'll go back into the menu right here. Next up we have image review, which is currently off, which is surprising. Usually with cameras like any camera, you take a picture, it's gonna automatically show you the image on the back of your screen. That also becomes a pain in the butt when you're looking through the electronic viewfinder, you're taking pictures, and then the image pops up. So I leave this on off because I don't want the image to pop up when I'm shooting. I can look at it when I'm done shooting and that will be better off. Um, this again, I leave all of these on the defaults. Moving down to rotate tall. I like to turn this off. The reason I turn this off is because I wanna turn my whole camera vertically to see the full frame of the image. Now, when you have it on, it just puts a vertical shot vertically on a horizontal screen, so you don't really get to see all of it there. That's just a personal preference. Uh, slideshow I don't do, and ratings I also don't do. And finally, that is it. That is going through all of these menus along the left-hand side of the screen. It's a lot of stuff but we made it. Are you new to photo editing and using Adobe Lightroom and you're not sure where to start in the editing process? Well, we created 14 custom presets for Adobe Lightroom that are gonna give you a great starting point as well as save you a ton of time when you're editing your RAW files. To check out all 14 of these and play with the sliders to see the before and afters, head on over to frontosphoto.com slash presets. So now I wanna show you guys what you're gonna see on the back of the camera when you're in live view mode versus putting your eye up to the viewfinder. Now I'd love to show you what the viewfinder sees, but we can't exactly record that. So I'm gonna look at the back of the screen and share what I am looking at. Up here on the top left, you've got M. That means manual. You are set to manual mode. If you were in S or A, it would tell you aperture priority or shutter priority. I generally stay in manual when I'm shooting. To the right of that, you have the how many frames a second you're going to shoot. Now, the way that you're gonna change that is you hit this button down here on the back of the camera and you can rotate this back command dial to go from either single to continuous low to continuous high, to continuous extended, which I personally don't shoot in, and also your self timer. Now, if you wanna make changes to the top level here, you would turn the front command dial. And as you turn that, it makes changes just like that. So I'm gonna turn the back dial back to continuous high, which is where I like to shoot in, and I'm gonna go back to the main screen right here. So remember when I showed you, you see the red dot moving around the screen? That is your focus point. Remember when I said you hit the OK button and that puts it back in the middle? Watch this. I'm gonna move it all the way to the right. I hit the OK button and it goes right back to the middle. And I'm gonna take the focusing point to go all the way down. You see how it ends up back at the top? That's because I have focus wrap around on so that it will just wrap around so you can quickly get from one side to the other or hit the OK button to get back to the middle. Now next to the H, you've got AFS, which is your single focus, and next to that are your focusing points. So how do you change these? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Hit the I button, and by default, this is what the camera comes to you with the settings already set at. You've got your AFS. If you wanna make a change here, you could hit OK, or you could just touch the screen. So you got AFS, and then you have AFC, or manual focus. So I'm gonna go into AFC. Now that is changing my camera into continuous autofocus. If I wanna change my focusing points, I can touch right here on the back of the screen, and I'm just gonna arrow over for now. You can see single point AF, dynamic area AF, wide area AF small, wide area AF large, and then auto area AF if you want the camera making all the decisions for you. When I'm shooting action, I'm generally in dynamic area AF, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that, hit the I button again, and now you can see on the screen, that is what your dynamic area AF box looks like. Moving on, you see something that says off. That is active delighting. It's not something that I even want to show up in my screen, but for whatever reason, it's there. Next to there is what your picture style is currently set to. Currently mine is on auto. My white balance is on auto one. You can see that I'm in FX, which is full frame, and also shooting raw, 
large because I like to shoot raw large because I go ahead and shoot raw. Now, do you see the light meter on the side of the screen? That's the thing with the plus and the minus and then the zero in the middle. Theoretically, if you get your exposure right in the middle there, then it's saying that you have the proper exposure. So watch as I change my exposure just by slowing down my shutter speed. You can see that it's telling me, well, that would be the right exposure or pretty close to it. It's going to go ahead and change but I always look at my meter just to know where I need to be. But honestly, when you have your viewfinder set so that you see exactly what your exposure is going to look like, it's gonna be pretty similar to what you see right there on the side of the screen. Now, down here on the back of the camera, I've got the ability to actually touch and change my shutter speed. I'm not really gonna do this. Uh, that's kind of slow and antiquated. So when your eye is up to the camera, you're gonna be able to turn this back command dial when you're in manual, and that is changing your shutter speed. To change the aperture, you're gonna turn the front command dial just like this. Now also, watch this. I'm gonna press the ISO button on the top of the camera. It highlights ISO. I turn the back dial, and I'm now dialing down my ISO and then dialing it back up using the back command dial. Moving down to the bottom of your viewfinder, you're gonna see a number. In this case, it says 116. That's how many photos I have left. Next to that is the ISO, which we just changed, followed by your aperture and your shutter speed. And then all the way next to the shutter speed, you're gonna see the metering mode that you're in. Right now, I'm in 3D matrix metering. Above that, you've got your uh, battery meter, so that's gonna show you how much battery you have left. And then you see a hand that looks like it's waving at you, except it's got squiggly lines or lines to the right of it and lines to the left of it. Uh, what that is, is whether or not you have image stabilization on. So if you have that on, you're gonna see this hand showing you that it's on, and if you have it off, it won't look like this. What's actually pretty cool is that there is a display button on the back of the camera. Watch what happens when I hit the display button. It cycles through different types of displays. It either takes off all the information that was on there just to give you a more clean looking display. As I hit it again, the histogram pops up, which is actually something that I've been putting on to the viewfinder when I'm shooting so that I can see actively how my histogram looks to help me get a better exposure. I hit it again and we've got the thing that helps you get, it's like the world, it's like a video game. Woo! Oh, I wanna get my focus point back in the middle. Yeah, there we go. This is tell telling you whether you have your line straight or your angles straight. I personally don't like using this because I tend to get my line straight just from seeing them, uh, but this comes in handy if you're on a tripod uh, or if you really, really wanna see if the camera is straight, you can go ahead and use that. Hitting the display again, this is what it would look like on the back of the screen. It's gonna show you all of this information, which is really easy to get to when you hit the I button that says set and then it takes us right back to the beginning. Now, two more buttons on the front of the camera. We've got the function one as well as function two, and they are default set to the top one to white balance, which is not something that I need to quickly ever change. So I would go ahead and reset this button to something that you wanna to get to quicker, like changing your focus modes or your focusing points. So the button below that actually allows you to highlight when you press it, your whether you wanna be in continuous focus or single, and also your focus modes. So by turning the back dial, it's changing AFS to AFC or to manual, and then you can turn the front command dial and you can see that I'm changing the different focusing modes from wide to dynamic area AF, just from the camera. So it's really easy and quick to get to these functions. It does take some time to get used to where the buttons are and what the cause and effect is, but it really is pretty easy and you will get used to it fairly quick. So that is pretty much it for helping you set up this camera. Now, I know I didn't go through every single subtle nuance of what to set and what this does, but if I did that, this would be a super long video. I've given you enough information to get started, and if you ever need to, just look at the question mark button inside the camera to help explain what each setting is. So like I said, I just wanted to give you a jump start in using your Nikon Z7. Now, if you like this video, well, please hit the subscribe button as well as like. And when you hit subscribe and that bell right next to it, you'll be notified when I put new videos live. There's almost 3,000 videos over the past nine years to help you become a better photographer. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com.
See ya. Subscribe now.